we're going to read the first three verses, but we are going to jump around and look at a couple of more verses within chapter 26 as the sermon goes forward this evening. Genesis 26, first three verses. There is a very famous uh, Christian song. And it is a Christian song that many Sunday school teachers would know this song or should know this song. It is, it is a song that has been uh, uh, sung and it's, and it's taught really to the young ones, but really the older ones need to listen. And I'm not gonna sing it, I don't, you know, it depends how I feel, but it's called, Oh, Be Careful Little Eyes. Who knows that song? Oh, be careful little eyes what you see. Oh, be careful little eyes what you see. Yes, the Father up above is looking down below. So be careful, little eyes, what you see. And if you know that song, whoever the writer was, it moves from little eyes to ears. They're from ears to tongue, tongues to hand, hands to feet. And this, this, this song literally covers the whole body, covers the whole person, you can say. And the writer of the song, he, he's admonishing us. He's, he's warning us to be careful. And yes, the father up above is looking, but also he's telling us about the little eyes. Because listen to me tonight, little eyes become big eyes. And if we are not careful, the cycle continues. I want to preach a sermon I've simply called Walking in My Father's Footsteps. And tonight, God wants to speak to predominantly fathers, fathers to be men tonight. But this is this is open to all. This is this is this is this is this is something I know that God's going to speak to everyone tonight. And I'm I, I'm I'm addressing uh, fathers, mothers, fathers to be, mothers to be, parents. Uh, you can you can throw in big sister, little sister, wherever you want. God wants to speak to you tonight. Um, but I've called it walking in my father's footsteps. So you're going to see why very soon. Let's read um, Genesis 26. Verse 1 to verse 3. The Bible says there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. Then the Lord appeared to him, that's to Isaac, and said, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Verse 3. Dwell in this land the land being Gerar, and I will be with you and bless you. And to you and your descendants, I will give these lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. Walk in, in my father's footsteps. Father, tonight we love you. Father, tonight we are thankful, God, you are in this place. Father, tonight we are thankful, God, that you are doing a work in our character, that you are changing us to be more like the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, tonight we need your help, oh God. We, we need your, your intervention in our lives. We need you to, to change us to be more like you. We need help, oh God. Speak to men and women. Speak to fathers and mothers. Speak to singles and married. Minister your word tonight. Oh God, I pray you would do beyond what your servant can ever do, Lord. Beyond what I see with the naked eyes. Father, bring a supernatural change. Oh God, help us to live the life and to walk in the exampleship that Jesus, you have set before us. Father, we want to give you the glory, give you the praise for all you are doing. Father, we bless you tonight in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and all of God's people said, uh, amen um, and amen. I want us to look first of all tonight, I want us to consider steps of trouble. Steps of trouble. They say the majority of people, not the minority, but the majority of people, and maybe tonight you would bear with me tonight, you would understand what I'm about to say, do not like they loathe the experience of somebody. I want you to imagine this is a blackboard scratching it. Who's ever heard that before? 
when somebody goes and they scratch a blackboard and the majority of people do not like, they cannot, it, 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 they, they say when this happens, what it does, people describe the sound that is produced from this as unpleasant, shivering, irritating, and uncomfortable. That when somebody scratches the blackboard, it is the most, your whole body literally begins to, you know, just, just, it just, it just, it just literally just horrible, uh, unpleasant. You can't, it affects every, it touches every, every cell you can say in your body. Well, tonight, if you are a parent, as well as parent to be one day, if I can throw this out tonight, you have all seen your child do something, say something, or react in a certain way poorly, and it was like the scratching of somebody's nails on a blackboard. Because when they did this, you realize that you were basically looking at the mirror. You were looking at the mirror, some of your, you could say, less lovable traits, and it is being played back to you by your own child. Or maybe tonight, amen, you said something, and you realize, you know what, I sound just like my mother. I sound just like my father. Or maybe tonight you've said those words, I'm never going to do what my mother did. I'm never going to do what my dad did. I'm never going to say this. I'm never going to do that. And you're thinking about some action or some thing or some way that they've acted, some word that's been said, and you've attached that, that, that label never to it, only to find yourself saying, doing, and being the very thing you swore you would never be. See, like it or not tonight, church, there is a tendency in us uh, to follow in the steps of our parents uh, for good or for bad. And in our text tonight, amen, it begins, the Bible says, with a famine in the land. And we are told it was a similar famine as it was in the days of Abraham. The Bible says that this is speaking about Isaac and Isaac the son is experiencing the same famine. You can say that his father, Abraham, had been through. I want to pause and simply say this tonight, church. History does repeat itself. It is important we grasp this tonight. In fact, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, that no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful. And tonight we're going to find out, amen, the faithfulness of God in this story. But also we must see, amen, that there is nothing that you are dealing with that somebody else has not dealt with before. There's something, amen, tonight you must understand that you're not the only one. Amen. Many times the devil wants to come and lie to you and say you are the only one dealing with this. You're the only one, amen, struggling with this. There's something wrong with you. Let me give you a news flash tonight. There's nothing wrong with you. There's everything right with you tonight. Amen. You are dealing with what others has dealt with, and especially we want to say, Amen. When it comes to this, Amen. It, I want to talk about our parents because here is a text. The Bible says there is a famine in the land that Abraham's time has experienced, and when the famine happened for Abraham, the Bible says Abraham ran to Egypt. He ran away. He didn't want to deal with the famine tonight that was about to, to come upon him, and here he is. He's running to Egypt instead of trusting in God, and here here is this man, his first instincts was always to run whenever trouble came. Whenever trouble showed his ugly head, he wanted to run away. He never wanted to deal uh, with the trouble. And we see this also play out in the life of Isaac as well. You see, tonight God knew that Isaac had the same tendencies that his father did. God knew tonight that when famine came, Isaac would run uh, 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 to run, uh, 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 would run away from it. And you can say all roads was leading to Egypt. And tonight you could almost look at this story and say, you know what, like father, like son. He's running to Egypt. Egypt, as you know, is a picture of the world. Egypt tonight, amen, is a picture of all that is not God. And I want to say tonight that God knows that we do exactly the same thing as well. And he tries to warn us. And tonight we need to stop and ask the question, are we listening tonight? That many times we, 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 we play out the same traits and the same responses as mom and dad. I'll say for you, amen. When we were in South Africa, one of the big things that was happening there uh, was ancestral worship, with the worship of the ancestors. Uh, you know, this is, this is dead parents or dead uncles or dead aunties. And, 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 and sadly, those, those, those parents, uh, uncles and aunties, when they were alive, they would, they would drink 
uh, they would make a, a special uh, uh, African drink. I, I, I can't, I'm not going to try and pronounce it now. I used to be able to do it, but I pronounce it now. And it would just raw alcohol and they would drink it and it would become very abusive, very violent. Uh, there was a lot of incest uh, going on um, uh, at that time. And I remember, you know, you're, you're talking to people and you're, you're challenging them uh, about this whole issue of uh, ancestral worship. Uh, and you basically say to them, basically, them, listen, if, if, if they were drunk, and, and if they were abusive and they died that way, what makes you think they're going to help you now? What makes you think that a drunk and abusive person who couldn't help you were alive, now they're dead, all of a sudden they have the same power to help you. Tonight, let me tell you something about ancestral worship tonight, amen. It is a life from hell tonight. It is a man-made thing, amen, that, 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 that people don't, don't want to, use, don't want to uh, focus towards a holy God tonight. And I really believe tonight that God sent us there to break a chain, to break a yoke that was upon people's lives and people's minds. This is tonight uh, God knew tonight. That's why, amen, he tells Isaac in verse 2, Isaac, you are going to stay where you are. Isaac, you are going to stay in Gerar because I'm trying to help you Isaac. Isaac, you need to listen to what I'm telling you. And tonight, you need to ask church, are we listening to what God is telling us tonight? Because like it or not, our kids have the tendency to react to difficulties the same way we do. No one is saying amen. Okay, that's good. Because you don't believe me. Let's begin. What about blaming others? You know what? Our kids are, they, they, they are silent observers of blame shifting. That when we blame, when we shift blame from ourselves to other people, they're right there. They're watching and they're seeing us not taking responsibility of our own actions, shifting blames to other people. And what happens, they use our lives and the reactions to how we deal with lives as a template to how they're going to deal with life as well. Not only do we blame shift tonight, mean we make excuses. This is another way our kids tend to model themselves after us. That it's always somebody else's fault. It is never our fault. It's always something else. It's never me. In fact, in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 13, I'm going to read from the Amplified Bible version. It says, the lazy one manufactures excuses and says, there is a lion outside. I will be killed in the streets if I go to work. And what they have seen, they have watched somebody tonight who has given excuses of excuses after excuses why they can't work. And if they can't work, if they can't work, if that's all they've been modeled, if all that they've seen, well, guess what I'm going to do as well? I'm going to stay home and I can't go to work. Why? Because there's a line outside, the same line that was trying to bite my dad all years ago. And he's outside, he's trying to get me as well, so I really can't go to get work. So I'm going to stay here, I'm going to sign on, I'm going to just, just chill out, and the government's going to pay for everything and look after me, and that's that. What about running away? This is exactly what Isaac was trying to do. Isaac was trying to run away from his problems. See, rather than being given an example of confronting problems and trials, we have received, and maybe God help us, even given ourselves, one of running away from problems and trials. One of running away from conflict and trouble. One of running away from difficulties. And we run from one problem at work to another problem at work. And it's always the boss's fault or my colleague's fault or they're all conspiring against me. That's the moment that that's why the moment I walk into the canteen, they all look up and look away because they're planning to get rid of me for the job. But they don't want me to have this job because they're jealous and they want my post. And we run and run and run. Some people are running from church to church. Hello. And it's amazing, wherever they go, there's dead bodies after them. Some people are running them out from a geographic location. When we were in South Africa, there was a couple that came to church and, 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 and they were doing very well. And uh, uh, long story short, uh, uh, basically one time where we, I was, uh, we, they were, they were, they were, we were together, we were talking to myself, the husband, the wife. Then the husband went away to go and talk to some people. And the wife looked and she came to me, she's pastor, pastor. She pulled me aside. She says, pastor, I need to tell you this. I go, what? She goes, it's, 
Him, I go what? He, 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 anytime, he, anytime he gets cold feet, we move from one place to another place to another place. Pastor, he wants us to go again. Because anytime he gets cold feet, he just he just can't stay, and he just I just and he thinks by moving things are going to get better. By the way, they've moved many other times after this conversation. Now I understand tonight. And I'm not saying tonight that God cannot move us. But as the text shows us tonight, church, it is better to live by God's instruction than our instruction tonight. And God simply tells this man, Isaac, you better stay in Gerar. What about escaping tonight? You see, when it comes to escaping, we're there. We haven't left any location, we're actually present, we're there. But what I mean tonight is escaping in the bottle. Escaping by way of alcohol. Do you know how many children have watched their parents deal with life's disappointments with the bottle? And now they're grown, and when they're disappointed by life, guess where they go to now as well? What about weed? I remember I had a friend back in the day called Douglas. I think my wife remember him way, way, way back in the day. And I remember one time I went to go and see. I went to go and see. I went to go and see him. Came to his house. Went to go and see him. And I, I'm in his room. We're talking. We know what you know. We're young, foolish, and chatting bear nonsense. Then his mom came in the room. Said, "Dougie, Dougie, you got any weed? You got any weed? Dougie." And she went out. Shut, mom. Shut, shut. And he's cussing down his mom. And I'm like. That, that, was, that was foreign to me. I was like, you don't talk to your mom like that. You don't talk, I mean, he's, I mean, he's cussing his mom down. See, and when she like said, Doc, you don't, don't talk to your mom like that. Because now you don't know her. She's always been like that. Even before I start smoking, she was smoking. And the moment she gets stressed, I have to smoke weed. Guess what happens to Douglas? Guess what happened to him and his brothers? Anytime they're stressed. Before we start dissing weed, which we should. What about holidays? I need a holiday. I need, I need a holiday. I'm stressed. I need a holiday. And your little five year old is watching that. Add 10 years to that. I need a holiday. I need a holiday. And they're doing exactly what you're doing. You know what? Some people manipulate people they have influence with to convince other people they don't have influence with so they can get their way. And their child is watching that. Oh, so you manipulate her because she can get to him so you can get what you want to do. Okay, okay, okay. Look at wrong steps tonight. There's so many ways we can go with this. If I let me throw in one more because I feel like it. What about whining and complaining? I know nobody here does that here. So we can tell people out there that they whine and complain, but nobody, this church, nobody whines and complains. I know that for a fact. In 1 Timothy chapter three, regarding the office of a bishop, this way a bishop should not be quarrelsome. In other words, a bishop is not causing drama with everybody in church. Do you know tonight there are some people who love drama because mom and dad love drama? Some people are arguing because mom and dad love arguing. In fact, I'll go as far as they say some people, they have to have war or they can't be at peace. That you know what? I don't like it that everyone is getting along. I don't like it that everyone's actually working at the building relationships. I don't like it that there's actually peace in the house of God. I need some war. And anything they do, they want to complain about it, even if it's for Jesus. Again, I know that never happened here, so that's, that's fine. I just put that four out of for free. So let's consider wrong steps. The question tonight is, what is your go-to? And I'm talking about an area of steps that leads to trouble, that came from an example that you and I should not have had. The Bible says, Isaac obeys God. He stays in Gerar. 
God says, Isaac, you are not going to Egypt. You better listen to me, boy. And Isaac listens and he stays in Gerar. He obeys God. He stays put uh, where he should stay put tonight. Uh, but let me stop and say this tonight. Just because you do this tonight, just because God speaks to you and God says, you stay put, don't, I know you want to run off. I know you want to go. And I know you want to go do what you want to do. And just because you obey God and stay put tonight, it doesn't mean that you are not going to have to deal with temptation tonight. Now I'm going to read verse 6 to verse 7. Remember, God deals with him. He wants to run to Egypt. God says, stay in Gerar. And he goes, I'll oh, stay. Now watch verse 6 and verse 7. The Bible says, so Isaac dwelt in Gerar. He's obeying God. He's staying where he is. Verse 7. And the man of the place asked about his wife. And he said, she is my sister. For he was afraid to say, she's my wife. Because he thought lest the man of the place kill me for Rebecca because she is beautiful to behold. Our kids can take our wrong steps further than we did. Our kids can take our wrongdoing further than we did. You may not have kids in this place. You, you Listen, think about you being the child of your parents. You can take their madness further than they did tonight. In the second commandment, we are told in Exodus chapter 20 verse 5, you should not bow down to them nor serve them. For I'm the Lord your God, I'm a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. God is dealing with his people about idolatry tonight. And tonight we must understand when this second commandment, God takes idolatry, that is any person, place, thing, or thought that you put in place as your source, God takes idolatry extremely seriously. And when we give ourselves uh, to idols, and when we begin to give something else, more priority in our lives than God tonight, uh, we are committing a much more serious sin uh, than we even can be even begin uh, to realize. There are people tonight, uh, amen, who look at this text uh, and they believe that it is talking about the consequences uh, of our sin that trickle down uh, from one generation to the next generation. But I believe, church, it's actually more than that tonight. I believe that our children, that I believe in mean, us as children tonight, we are going to end up following the steps, uh, amen, and the footprints um, of our parents uh, by even committing the same sin as they did. And sometimes we take it up a notch. Look at our text. Both father and son had good taste in women. The Bible says Sarah at 65 years old when she was taken by Pharaoh and 10 years later, 75 years old when she was taken by Abimelech was a seriously beautiful woman. I mean, she was, she was fine at, have you seen some 75 year old women? I was in the majority of 75 year old women. Sarah was drop dead gorgeous, as they would say, at 75 years old. She was a beautiful woman. Well, Isaac, the Bible tells us, marries a beautiful woman too in Rebecca. So, so far, so good. Dad married a beautiful woman. Uh, Isaac marries a beautiful woman. But we see them responding exactly the same way when men inquired about their wife to them. And for exactly the same reason. Verse 7 and verse 8. And the men of the place asked about his wife. And he says, she's my sister. For he was afraid to say she's my wife because he thought lest the men of the place kill me for Rebecca because she's beautiful to behold. Verse eight. Now it came to pass when the king, when, um, yeah, sorry, it came to pass when he had been there a long time that Abimelech king of the Philistines looked through a window and saw that there was Isaac showing endearment to Rebecca, his wife. Who is she? Oh, she's my sister. Okay, all right, cool, cool, cool. Time is passing. The king is looking outside his window. And I think, this is me, I think he's suspicious. Time has passed. He looks outside the window and he sees Isaac. And if you read, if you, if you, if you, if you read 
certain uh, 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 version of the Bible, translation of the Bible, they were, they were, he was caressing her. I hope nobody caresses their sister here. He's caressing her. It's like, hey, I thought that's your sister. Well, 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 well. You know what? The same thing happened with Father Abraham. Twice. You see, not only did this man have a tendency to run away from trouble when he came like dad, but both him and dad were men who were prone to lying under pressure. The moment pressure came, these men began to lie. You know what's deep about this issue? Was Isaac was not even born when the encounter with his father and Pharaoh and his father and Abimelech took place. It was like he was a kid and he saw it. He wasn't even born yet. But he's doing exactly to the T what that did. Now maybe, maybe, I don't know tonight, maybe somebody told him. Maybe some servant, maybe mom, I don't know, maybe somebody told him tonight and said, this is what your dad did tonight, you know, and he, he, he was acting this way. But maybe tonight, just maybe as well tonight, here is a man, he's picked up a very seriously horrible character flow from his dad. And let me stop and say this tonight. I wish my kids didn't have everything I have. I wish they only had the good stuff. I really do. I wish they had the good stuff. You know, there's good, hey, there's good stuff in me. <laughs> there's some good stuff in this brother. I don't care what you think. There's some good stuff in me. I wish they only had that, but they've got everything. They've got the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's there. It's, it, it's in there. And let me be real. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen past like, oh, Lord, why? It's there. I thought jumped a generation, you know, just, but it's there. And whether you like it or not, it's there. Listen, they've got, there's, there's many women here, you are, you are phenomenal, love you, you are, I mean, I, I, I can't big you up enough. And I can talk about bare good stuff in you, bare good stuff in you. But you know, got some bad stuff as well. I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, it's there. It's there, whether you like it or not tonight. All my, all my lacks, my strengths, my weaknesses is seen in my children because they're made in my image. And this is significant because what our kids do, our kids tend to identify with a broken part of us. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 1 says this, a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. Now we know this tonight. But Isaac's sin is actually greater than his father's sin. You say, how is that possible? They did exactly the same thing. They both lied. That's true tonight. But here it is tonight. Rebecca was not even Isaac's half-sister. Do you know tonight, with Abraham, if there's any such thing as a half-lie, he would have been close. Because Sarah is actually Abraham's half-sister. If you read your Bible, she, they share the same dad, but not the same mom. Now, this wasn't unusual at that, those days. I'm not going to go into all of that. But when Abraham was approached and asked by his, the, the, the men in Egypt and the men in, 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 in Gerar as well about Sarah, he deliberately chose to deceive them. And a lie is a lie in God's economy. I, I have people say, I didn't kind of lie. Just, I just kind of, I just, I just kind of, I just, it's, a, like, like, it's not really a lie. It's like a white lie mixed with a little Indian and Indian and mixed with a Japanese and a little orange and pink and blue and green. And it's wonderful. A lie is a lie in God's, God's book, folks. You know what's the sad thing about this as well? Is that Sarah goes along with Abraham's lies. If you know the account, she's taken by Pharaoh, put into his harem. He's going to mess with us. He's put in the harem. Okay, I'm going to keep her there. You know, God has to intervene, right? And, and Sarah says nothing. Says, hey, 
He's a liar. Tell him the truth. He doesn't say, she says nothing. She's quiet. She goes along with this man's lie. Now, let me say this tonight. This is a case where obedience to God should supersede obedience to your husband, your wife, your spouse tonight. A wife has no obligation to obey her husband tonight when obeying him means compromising to what God has clearly said in his word you should not do. I'll say for you, amen. Some of you don't, okay, Acts chapter 5 verse 29. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. In fact, one translation says, we must obey God rather than men. You know, I have people, I've had people tell me, well, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just following my husband. I have people tell me, well, I, 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 I must follow my husband. Follow him. But I hope not to sin and not in sin. It's like almost like get our card. The reason is because of my husband. The reason is because of my wife. I hope you're not following them to sin. I hope you're not following them in sin. You know what I've realized? That telling lies seems to be one of humanity's favorite things of shifting responsibility. When nobody wants to take responsibility, we tell lies and we just use the shift responsibility tonight. Here is his challenge. Who is this woman? Oh, she's my sister. That she and your sister. Yeah, you're right. Why do you lie then? You know, many times we think we don't have a choice. And the moment you start thinking that sin is something that you could not avoid doing tonight, it becomes more, more, it becomes more of a viable option. So let me ask you a question tonight. What, what will it take for you to lie? You know, some people get, in, get into trouble with their mouths. We've been looking at that in our Bible study. And what happens is they use their mouths to get out of trouble, but eventually use their mouth to get back into trouble as well. Let's close quick look at stepping up. Tonight, God is bigger than sin. Amen. He's bigger than our sin and our deception tonight. Because despite it all, God blesses Isaac. And this is what you need to see. He blesses Isaac because of Abraham. He blesses Isaac because of his parent. He blesses Isaac because Abraham and God had a relationship. Listen to me very carefully tonight, church. He doesn't bless him just materially because he does. He's rich. But also he blessed him spiritually. The Bible says God spoke to Isaac. The Bible says God led Isaac. The Bible tells us God protected Isaac. In fact, I mean, God confirmed the Isaac, sorry, the, the covenant he had made with Abraham. And he says, through your seed, you are going to begin to become a great nation and bless the earth. Well, that seed was Isaac. And God shows up to Isaac and says, I'm going to confirm my covenant through you that I made with your father. All because of his parents. You know, in one way or the other, I believe that each new generation must experience the same test as the previous generation. And they're going to discover two things. They're going to discover tonight the enemy doesn't change. And human nature does not improve. Listen, we're all messed up, folks. Every single one of us. You know, there's some things tonight, if we're real tonight, some of you tonight, you understand this, that we were hard on our parents or some stuff. And I, and I say that now because that we are hard on our parents and, yeah, 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 until you become a parent or until you go through what they went through and, and, and you, you flopped as well and you realize, oh God, I need help. Because the reality is that I, it's, it's not a case, I'm not justifying them, I'm not justifying me, but, but when those things happen, it ought to bring us to a place where we fall on our knees and say, God, you need to help me. God, I need to be better than this. God, I need to overcome this. 
Here's Isaac. He's blessed because of his father. He's blessed because, you could say, of his parents tonight. And Abraham may have left some bad character traits, but he left Isaac the greatest thing ever, and that is a relationship with God. Listen, just imagine, listen to me, just imagine he never did tonight. Just imagine that was never at place. Abraham may have had his shortcomings tonight, but he got right and he kept on going and he kept on walking with God. You see, Abraham was not just like his father in his failures. Abraham was like his father in his faith. He trusted God. He believed God. He held on to God. And the sad thing is sometimes you have people who are looking for an excuse to drop out and give up and throw in the towel. No, no, no. Abraham kept on going and he passed this tenacity. He passed this faith to his son that when he went through times of difficulty and he wanted to throw in the towel i'm sure tonight amen he thought about his father he thought about how one time his father i mean he saw sacrifices a father in a very real way and his father took him up and then mount, mount mariah willing to sacrifice him because god says so he saw the faithfulness of his father that his father stayed with his mother until they died until she died he saw amen that the, the, the prayer of his father that his father would go and seek god and worship god he saw those things and I'm sure tonight he tapped into that and says, I'm going to keep some of that for myself. I believe tonight the positive he was given was far greater than the negative that he was given. Let me close by saying this. I was talking to Pastor Jane Nembard. We were talking, we meet her from time to time. And we were talking about, we like, we both like boxing. And we were talking about, you know, fathers and sons, especially in the Bible. And what's sad is you see some great men of God who their sons did some foolishness. I mean, Samuel, Moses is just some, you know, uh, great men of God. And, and, and the sons were, 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 were not so great sons, you can say. And the truth tonight is I believe the majority of parents desire their children, whether it be biological or spiritual, to surpass them we want them to be better we want them we, we we it is our desire outdo listen outdo me please i'm begging you do it for the you know and and we were talking about this and we start talking uh um uh, uh, uh i don't know how it came to this but we start talking about uh some of you may know this guy some of you may know this guy i know carl probably will you know we started talking about eddie hearn who knows what eddie hearn is yeah there you go Eddie, Eddie Hearn has a famous father. His name is Barry Hearn. And Barry Hearn used to be a, a boxing uh, promoter as well. And what happened, Eddie recently took over the business, family business. And let me tell you something, Eddie has surpassed his father. He's one Rick, he has surpassed. The other businesses, people, you know, I can talk about, et cetera, and so forth. The sons are taking over it. And it's like, you don't even know who they are, you know, because you just remember the dad. No, 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 no. Now it's like people are like, who's Barry? Everyone talks now about Eddie, and I and he's he's written a book. He's written a book, and I want to read some bits of it, and I'm going to close. But I want you to there's some parts I, I'm really going to highlight. But I want you to, you know, there's some things here that are like very very good, and um, he's 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 an Essex boy, East Londoner, uh, Cockney, uh, and and there's there's some terms here. I'm sure they're not bad words. If they are, Father, forgive me. <laughs> Somebody could correct me afterwards and say, pasta. All right, let's go. Let's, let's read it quickly then. But I'll, 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 I'll get to the main point. You hear me highlight it. All right. He says, growing up, I was always a son of Barry Hearns. My dad started making a lot of money promoting fights around the world. And I was in his slipstream. I was gobby and probably a little bit disrespectful at times. But I felt sort of indestructible. I felt like we were the main family in Essex and we were around success, successful people like Frank Bruno, Chris Eubank. Some of you remember these people living that kind of lifestyle. The last thing you want to do is listen to teachers at school. Looking back, it's a really bad attitude to have. I've had a big problem with, with authority. It was it was naivety, getting a little bit carried, uh, carried away with myself, being immature and a little bit insecure as well because I was fighting for my own name, my own identity. I think a good word to use is obnoxious. Too much wax in the ears. 
you know, swimming around trying to get into nightclubs, not realizing that actually I was a plonker. Now, again, I'm, that word plonker means you, yeah, idiot. There you go. All right. He goes, I get all, now listen, I get all my greatest business qualities from my dad, but I get my greatest qualities from my mom. She's extremely humble. They're both from council estates in East London. And she really understands the value of money and hard work. And she was very big on manners. I would break her heart at school because she expected me to be a good student. But I've got my dad. I've got my dad's side in that respect. He's a salesman. And that's what I am. But although I do appear to be a loud and flashy, beneath that are the fundamentals she taught me. Her main concern was to make me a good person. And now that's all I actually worry about when it comes to my own kids. Who knows what they'll do uh, in the future. I just want them to do well at school, to be good people, have good manners and have respect and be happy. Looking back, I wish I'd, I hadn't caused my mom so much ag aggravation. I was always keen to impress my dad, but I was more concerned about upsetting my mother. And I upset her loads because she was always at school. And although she backed me to the hilt every time, it was always, dis I, um, it was always dis a disappointment to her. That's something, that's something I wish I could change. If I could go back and grab that boy by his lapels and put him against the wall and say, stop being such a prat. Start having some respect for your elders, respect your teachers and start learning because your dad is spending a fortune on school fees and you're wasting everybody's time. Now listen to this. I think being my dad's son has been the underlining drive and chip on my shoulder that made me what I am. I work like I haven't got a penny. That's partly because of the values he instilled in me, but also because I have, I have the drive to outperform him. There was only one way I could ever become my own person and get my own success. And that was to take what he had done to completely another level. Now you know, we joke. People go up to him on the tube and say, oh, you're Eddie Hearn's dad, aren't you? And we love that. Here is a man tonight who says, I've been given something and I'm going to build on that. That my dad and mom have given me something and I'm going to take it to another level. The problem today is we're taking the wrong things to another level. But we can take the right things to another level. Tonight, what are you giving them to build on? Tonight, what are you taking and building on? I believe tonight that we can be, we should be, and what what way are we doing this? That we can be better. We should be better. And, 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 and we need to ask ourselves, what are the positive qualities are you looking at? And you know tonight, these positive qualities are coming from your parents. They're coming from, uh, that you have in yourself maybe as well. And say, so, you know what? This is there. I'm going to take that. and I'm going to build on that. This is there. That's good. I'm going to take that. And I'm going to build on that. I thank God for business. Thank God for business tonight. But I'll say this tonight, nothing will ever replace, nothing will ever be greater than a godly example and a godly relationship with God. And that's something you better take tonight and build upon and let God be glorified. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes in this place. Amen. Very quickly, you're in this service tonight. You're not saved. You haven't given your life to Christ Jesus. If that's you, why don't you lift your hand up and put it down tonight? I want to pray with you in this place. Very quickly, unsaved or backslidden, lift your hand up, please. I want to pray with you tonight. Don't allow sin to send you to a devil's hell. You can be saved in a moment of time. If you put away your pride, repent of your sins, and put your faith in Jesus Christ. Come on, lift your hand up. I'll put it down tonight. We want to pray. Amen. Amen. I want to speak to God's people tonight. Tonight, God has, has, has laid before us, I believe tonight, he, there's a foundation that, he, that, 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 that God has 
is putting in us, but also there's a foundation. There's some good things I believe in our parents tonight that you and I need to take and build upon. The young people tonight, amen, the good things, amen, in your parents tonight that you need to look at because I want that. And no matter how good they are in, in, in academia, in, in, in business, in hustle, never disregard, don't turn a blind eye to, do not ignore their relationship with God. Because that is the one thing you better jump on. That is the one thing you better embrace. That is the one thing you better say, I'm going to surpass them, man. I'm going to, get, I'm going to draw close. Because as the Lord Jesus says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? You know, I enjoyed reading those extracts from his book and it's great and good. And it's talking about being a good person, but there's many good people in hell. Heaven is full of sinners who have repented of their sins. We realize I'm not good, but God, you are. Will you forgive me? Tonight, what we need to give our kids more than anything tonight, more than money, more than inheritance, uh, more than, you know, love and, and accept. You better give them God. Let them see. Let them, let them be, immerse them in it. It, 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 it. One day, by the grace of God, if they drift, it will save them. Walking in my father's footsteps. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little hands, what you touch. Because little hands, little feet, eventually become big hands and big feet. And we end up repeating the cycle. Tonight, I believe that cycle can be broken. But it takes a lot longer than you and I think. But it does start with us. And it's established in them. And if they break it, then that next generation. Tonight, the spirit of God is in this place. There's some wars we better win tonight. Because there's little feet following us. There's some things we better overcome tonight. We, there are people tonight, you better realize tonight that you, you're not as great as you think you are because there's a little bit of that mum in you. That sometimes you, you allow that negative side to, to express itself and, and have it. It's, it's, it's your go-to. And you better change that go-to because you've got little eyes and little feet watching. You can't respond as they did. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't leave them with that template. Begin to build a new one. Tonight, the Spirit of God is in this place. Amen. Why don't we all rise up tonight? Amen. The altar is open. I want to challenge. Amen. Parents, parents.